Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Budodukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. In today's video, we're going to be discussing 10 tips on stealth and deception by Hattori Hanzo, one of the most famous ninja of all time. Now, this information comes from the Nippiden, which is written in 1560 by Hattori Hanzo. Now, I always give a shout out to all of my new viewers. So if this is the first video that you guys have seen of me, my name is Krista Jacobson. I'm the headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, which means School of the Warrior Way. We teach Koryu Ninjutsu and Koryu Bujutsu, so the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. This organization does have other areas of focus, such as reality-based self-defense, weapons training and tactics, concealed carry, survival skills, martial arts theory, thought, and philosophy, martial arts conditioning. If any of those topics interest you at all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell. I do post two to three videos every single week. So if you're interested in any of those topics at all, please subscribe, click the bell and keep up with what we're doing. So today we're gonna to talk about 10 tips to stealth and deception written by Hattori Hanzo. Now, if you've not already seen my video on Enin and Yonin, please go watch that video. Uh, in that video, I talk about the two main types of ninja, Enin and Yonin, and exactly what their operation would be. This video is gonna talk more about Yonin, so if you don't know the difference, it might be a little confusing. Just know that if you wanna know the differences between Enin and Yonin, go watch that video, because this video is gonna be more on the lines of stealth and deception rather than concealment and camouflage. And if you want to know the difference in how those two different types of uh, spies would operate, again, go watch that video on the difference between Enin and Yonin. Now, the Nippiden was written in 1560 by Hattori Hanzo, and it's regarded as one of the three treasures in the ninja community. These three treasures are the Nippiden, Ban Senchukai, and Shoninki. All three of these historical ninja documents are left to the public domain, and the family lineages and schools that were originally attached to these three historical documents no longer exist. These three documents are left to the public domain and anyone who is studying historical ninjutsu and researching the history and tradition of the ninja should read these three treasures and apply this knowledge to their ninja martial arts training. Now I will be making a video regarding the three treasures of the ninja community, which are the Nippiden, Bonsen Shukai, and Shoninki. That video will be coming soon, so make sure that you guys subscribe so you can keep up with the updates, so you can hear me talk about the differences of these three historical ninja documents and how you can apply this information to your ninja training. In the Nippiden it says, when you go to another province on a secret mission, you may be inspected by the local people if they wonder about your identity. Therefore, you need to disguise yourself when you go out, so you can move around and investigate without arising suspicion. There are lots of ways to change yourself, and you should use disguises that follow the ways of that area. Now at this point, this isn't any different than a lot of the other historical ninja documents that we've talked about on this channel. If you're going to go to a certain place, you want to blend into that particular area so you don't stick out, right? If everyone's wearing a red shirt, you wear a red shirt. So you want to learn how you can dress and act and behave in a certain area when you're going to a different area and you also want to learn how to talk in a certain way that doesn't arise suspicion either. Now the 10 tips that Hattori Hanzo gives on stealth and deception are number one if you need to penetrate into the mountains make yourself look like a lumberjack by wearing clothes with a tear in them putting an axe and securing a long rope on your waist. Number two, when going into a grass field, imitate a field worker by putting a sickle and a rake on your waist to deceive people. It's the same in a wild field. Number three, when you go around in rice fields and vegetable fields, copy a farmer by carrying a hoe, a plow, and so on, and by putting on a straw raincoat or a straw hat blend in with other people. Number four, when going to a place around a river or seaside, dress yourself as a boatman by holding an oar or hanging a boat lock on your person. Number five, you can copy a fisherman by holding a fishing rod or a net in hand or by putting a creel basket on your waist. You can also copy a fisherman who has Camorant birds in a boat with torches. Number six, in towns or markets, disguise yourself as a merchant with a load of commodities suitable for the location and blend in with those people. Number seven, copy a craftsman with necessary tools for the prepared job, while also dressing as would be expected. Number eight, to disguise yourself as a samurai warrior, you should specialize in needed buge, martial arts. If you do this well enough to look like a skilled warrior, people will make every effort for you and you can grow intimate with them. So here I think it's important for you guys to know that buge means martial arts. If you guys have not already seen the video that I discussed the difference between budo and bujutsu, please go watch that because we also talk about buge. Uh, just really quick, budo means um, warrior way, bujutsu are warrior technique, and buge are warrior arts. 
You can also use the word martial rather than warrior, so budo would be martial way, bujutsu is martial technique, and buge are martial arts. So here, Hattori Hanzo is specifically saying that you need to learn the martial arts of the samurai if you're gonna disguise yourself as samurai. Number nine, if you copy a monk, you should read a sutra and say indol requiem for a departed soul or conduct a service. In this way, people will believe you, which will in turn come out beneficial. To impersonate a shrine keeper, you should learn about Shinto and the origins of some shrines. Tell people such stories and they will believe that you're a true shrine keeper. Number 10. If you're going to copy a fortune teller, traveling musician, or Yamabushi, or any kind of person, follow these guidelines in elaborate various ways to disguise yourself. This way, people of the province will not get so easily suspicious or confront you. Now, if you guys have not already watched my video on the seven disguises of the ninja, please go do so because that will explain a little bit more in depth on how the ninja disguise themselves and use deception to move from one area to another, okay? Now, that information comes from the Shonen Ki, written in 1681 by Natori Masatake. Now, previous in other videos, we've talked about the skill called Dako, or being able to disguise your voice to learn the different dialects and how you're supposed to act and behave in certain prefectures. This clearly goes along the lines of Yonin, and we've discussed this multiple times in many other videos. Now, Hattori Hanzo does bring up this particular skill set, and in the Nippaden, he says, The first thing you should learn is to get used to the language commonly used by the people of the province. No matter how good your disguise is, if your language is different from theirs, it will cause suspicion. Once you have created suspicion, they will not give any information. Therefore, you should be very careful not to arouse people's suspicion at all. So there you guys have it, the 10 tips on stealth and deception written in the Nimpaden in 1560 by Hattori Hanzo, one of the most famous ninja of all time. Now if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I have posted hundreds of videos on ninja and samurai scrolls and talking about history and tradition of feudal Japan. So if that's the topic you guys like, again, subscribe to the channel and keep up with what we're doing. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out our website at www.budodoninjutsu.com. There you guys can see the seven traditions a list of the skills, principles, and philosophies that we teach. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you guys can always join the Buddha Yukai Online Ninjutsu Dojo and start training with us that way. So thank you guys very much for your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Buddha. Bye.